everybody. This is Tulip. And this is Cassidy. And we're here with a not hugely delayed, but somewhat delayed episode of The Good News, the gospel according to AMC's Preacher. Not nearly as delayed as we were last year at this time. Right. Right. We're only about a month behind. Right. So, we are podcasting, oh my gosh, I didn't write down which episode it was. It was episode Uh, eight? Eight, the Tom Brady. The Tom Brady. So, Tulip, did you do anything sexy this weekend? (laughs) (laughs) I think it's time to check your browser history. (laughs) Oh, clear cash. (laughs) Oh, so how did you rate it? I rated it at 3.75 exploding humperdoos. Oh my god. I, I love... rated it 4 out of 5 exploding humperdoos. Oh my goodness, that is amazing. I can't One, I can't believe you rated it higher than me and I can't believe we rated it the same what thing. What are the odds that we picked exactly the same thing? Oh, except for that it was the best. It really was. I mean, what did and... Jesse say? I took science class and I've never seen so many intestines flying. <laughs> I, I'm looking at a, a, a big photo of someone in a suit uh, hosing down the room that the exploding humperdoos were in. And I'm right. just like, oh, my gosh, how do you get blood out of white grout? <laughs> I guess it would take a, a power washer. Well, and it looks like they were using a power washer. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what so, they were using. Yeah. Yeah, and that was some secure tile to put up with uh, about five dozen exploding humperdoos. Right. Yeah. I kept thinking, oh my, oh my God, they're going to run out of humperdoos. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought a woman scientist? <sighs> well, you know... There is a dearth of women in science, but we are where it counts. Right? <laughs> the Tom Brady. The Tom Brady. <laughs> I have something to say about that. We'll talk about that shortly. Excellent. So I do have some numbers. Um, I have live plus seven numbers. So overall... Um, it got good ratings in the 18 to 49 group. There was a 105% gain from live plus same day to live plus seven in the 18 to 49 viewership. So it seems to do that consistently because I have been keeping track of uh, whether or not we're going to get a season four and Screen Rant actually has a article up that says, it's very unlikely that the show will be canceled at this point. Ratings not only remained steady throughout season three, but actually picked up slightly. Preacher is currently AMC's fourth highest rated show in the coveted 18 to 49 demographic. So don't be surprised if season four announcements come sooner rather than later. Yay! Right? So you and had it- said that it was consistently ranking fourth on AMC, so that's good. Right, and last year they announced season three about mid-October-ish, so we should see that coming soon, hopefully. And I would imagine at this point, if they have not canceled it, they will renew it. From your lips to, should I say God's ears? God's still missing, so... The Messiah. (laughs) From your lips to the ears of the Messiah. (laughs) Whoever that may be. (laughs) (laughs) So we also, um, for the week of the 12th of August, which was when this aired, it ranked 16th in overall ratings for that week in Live Plus 7. Okay, is it just me or is it doing better than Fear of the Walking Dead? So it did really good. I mean, you can't quite hold it and fear up to each other or at least I didn't so I can't because I didn't look to see where fear fell in in the ratings okay so if it's if it's AMC's fourth highest rated show you've got Walking Dead Fear the Walking Dead Better Call Saul and Preacher yeah so not too shabby not too shabby and I'm thinking that Lodge 49 might start get some start to get some attention. It looks good. It looks funny. I just don't have time. I simply do not have time. 
There's so much out there. Right. I, we always I've, say that. I've started so much and I haven't finished and I'm still currently binge watching The Good Wife because I started watching The Good Fight and realized it was a sort of offshoot of The Good Wife. So, and I'm rewatching Buffy and hopefully I talk to Phil, maybe he and well, Hellfire and I will do a podcast about oh, the new Buffy. Good. If that ever gets its feet off the ground, so yeah. Very good. Well, I'm doing this. I'm doing Walking Dead. I'm trying to read a book and I'm trying to work. I'm barely keeping my head above water. Oh, right. Work is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Regardless of what you do, work is crazy. Why do we humans do this to ourselves? <laughs> 14 more years till retirement. I'm going to work until I die. <laughs> that's Which my, hope, that's my retirement plan. Work until I die. Is It's longer than 14 years or right? no? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So the title obviously is from the mixture that the scientist got that was the right mixture of goodness and badness for Humperdue to be able to keep Genesis. Right. Um, I think Jesse has actually shown us that there needs to be a little more badness than goodness. You know, I thought it was interesting. They're not exactly mixing, like, bad people with good people. It's not like it was, like, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer and... Uh, uh, Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa, yeah. No, it's it's people who were, like, kind of both good and bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, Louis the Fourteenth and Serena Williams. <laughs> right? <laughs> Although that uh, ref at the U.S. Open might disagree with Serena Williams being evil. Uh, not or, being evil. I was going to say he might disagree with her being more good than bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I actually think that the football player Tom Brady might be just the right balance of goodness and badness as well because I think he's pretty bad. <laughs> But I kind of have this bias against the Patriots, so what can I say? <laughs> so do the writers on the show, seemingly. <laughs> right. But, you know, you got to cut the guy some slack. He's married to Giselle, and he's got that horrible, like, vegan macrobiotic diet. So, I mean, anyone would turn evil on that kind of diet. But he was whiny and pouty before Giselle Bündchen, so... That's, that's very true. I, I can't cut the guy any slack. I'm just thinking that, you know, maybe she could have cut the process a little bit and he, she could have just injected Tom Brady and not done the blend of Thomas Jefferson and Wayne Brady. <laughs> but that's funnier. <laughs> it is. So our writers were Mary Laws and Kevin Rosen. We've talked about Mary Laws before. She's got credits for Preacher and... Uh, I think it's a movie called The Neon Demon. And then Kevin Moore, his only writer credit is this episode. Wow. But he's got miscellaneous crew credits for this. Um, Last Man Standing. A thing called One Big Happy. And then the movie that Seth Rogen was in called Neighbors. You know, I still haven't seen that. I haven't either. I, again, just not yeah. enough time. Yeah, no, but if you do get the chance, go uh, see the movie A Simple Favor with uh, Blake Lively and, um, oh, I can't think of her name now, but it's it, it's kind of like a Gone Girl type movie, but funnier. It's a dark comedy. I saw it this week and it's super funny. I was going to say, I'm going to display my complete and utter ignorance and say, is it in the theaters now? It is in theaters now. I had to see it because there are so many spoilery kind of headlines out there and I really wanted to see it anyway because of the female centric cast but it, like it was like 17 things that you should know about the twists and turns that a simple favor takes so it's it's a super funny movie I made time for it this weekend very good which is why we didn't podcast on Saturday night because I well, can't 
Scott. We are literally halfway through a rewatch of Deadpool 2, and I still haven't made it through it again. And it's not that I don't want to, it's just that I just don't have time. <laughs> Life is bonkers. Yep. Not exploding Humperdoo bonkers, but that's relative. I don't know. There are days it feels like it's exploding Humperdoo bonkers. Yeah. That might definitely. have to be my new measure. My boss is on vacation for two weeks, so my life is about to slow down a little bit. Ah, and you leave soon, right? I do. I go to Oklahoma City, not this week, but next week. Okay, so we have to do some planning. Yep. Um, so our director for this episode of Preacher was Wayne Yip. We have talked about him before. He has directed Into the Badlands, Cloak and Dagger, episode of Doctor Who, and a few episodes of Misfits, which... Has Cassidy in it. Yeah. Yeah. And Cloak and Dagger is a really good show also. So You know, we recorded it, and I think that, this, that the uh, the husband has watched a couple of episodes, but I haven't watched any of it. Yeah. So our featured cast this week, I decided that it was Thomas Jefferson and Wayne Brady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. Which I thought was kind of funny, but... I think it's super funny. So Thomas Jefferson, I did not know this, was our very first Secretary of State. I didn't know that either. He was our second Vice President and our third President. That I knew. Well, I knew that he was somewhere in the early, you know, like four to five. Could I have said that he was our third President? I don't know that I could have said that without looking it up. I'm being yeah. honest. Top ten. There you go. (laughs) He was the principal author of the Declaration of Independence, and he was incredibly accomplished. So not only was he known as a lawyer, a planter, and a politician, but I thought this was interesting. He's got, um, he's got, (laughs) that's so bad. He had skills in surveying, mathematics, horticulture, and mechanics. So he was incredibly brilliant and incredibly talented. But here's where the bad comes in. As where our presidents should be. Right. <laughs> Good point. But they should not be people who father slaves or father children on their slaves. And that's where the bad comes in. That's where the bad comes in. I think that's probably where we got some balance for Jesse and Genesis. Right. So he did father children with his slave, Sally Hemings. And I didn't realize this, but she was his wife's half-sister. Wow. I know. How crazy is that, huh? Wow. That is like a simple favor type twist. You should see that movie. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not being paid to say it. I just really liked the I was movie. Say, you're not plugging it or anything. <laughs> it, that's like, that's some cra- That's a crazy twist. I did not see that coming. Me either. And it was just Wikipedia. Who knows what the real deal is? You know, I did see something on, um, uh, there was something on like PBS where I was watching something on his house and like, there was like kind of a speakeasy type room. It was like behind a bookcase or something. And they discovered his, his slave mistress's quarters, like off of his own. And they were, they've been able to, um, like trace his genealogy. And there's, there's people that are alive today. that yeah. are it, Yeah. His children who are the children of slaves. Yeah, I mean, and I understand that there have been reunions between people who were from the offspring of his marriage and people who were from his relationship with Sally Hemings. Dude was prolific. (laughs) Not just in math, mechanics, and horticulture. Right? I mean, when did the guy find the time to sleep? (laughs) He probably didn't. He was probably one of those guys who got like four hours a night and was perfectly happy. What we did before Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> now what we do is look at Twitter and go, oh, God. Right? <laughs> you hear your phone buzz and you go, no. <laughs> I hope it's a flare in the Walking Dead R world because that's the only thing I'm looking at right now. <laughs> I don't have Twitter notifications turned on. Do you? Jeez. No, no, no. I would go crazy yeah, if I had Twitter I notifications turned on. Oh, 
So our other featured cast member is Wayne Brady, who we all know from Whose Line Is It Anyway. I love that show. It's a hilarious show. The reruns are hilarious. The new ones are hilarious. They are. Aisha Tyler is hosting, right? Yes. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, there was just a recent episode with uh, Aisha Tyler and Wayne Brady, and one of the guys makes a joke, and it's 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 kind of a racial joke, but because like Aisha Tyler and Wayne Brady are in on it, it's funny. <laughs> but it was one of those where I was like, that's an outtake, right? Nope, it totally aired. I'm going to have to find it and send it to you now. Hmm. It's one of those where it's like, I'm not I'm, sure you should have gotten away with that. I, I'm, not sure did. I, I'm not sure I can laugh at that. <laughs> but I did. I totally did. <laughs> So I have to tell you, his first credit, which I thought was hilarious, 1988, he was an extra in Earth Girls Are Easy. Oh my goodness, I have seen that show. It's the my, funniest. It's such a funny movie. My parents won the VHS tape at like a Christmas party or something, and I was like 12, and I saw that movie. It's funny. It is super funny. Jim Carrey, Jeff Goldblum, da was it Damon Wayans? It was one of the Wayans, br Wayans brothers. Uh, yes, it was Damon Wayans and um... or Jim Carrey. I said Jeff Carrey. I meant Jim yeah, Carrey. Yeah, Jim Carrey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that yeah. takes me. That was a funny movie. So now it would be like totally funny to go back and look and see if you can find Wayne Brady's like five seconds in the spotlight. <laughs> So, what an iconic first role. It just set him up for success. That's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So what I thought was kind of interesting is that he's done a lot of voiceover work. That's actually not shocking. He's got a great voice. He does have a great voice. It's always funny when he sings and when he does really goofy things on Who's Line. So um, what other stuff has he been in? He's been in 30 Rock. He's been in Key and Peele. How I Met Your Mother. He had a recurring role on Colony. Um, Real Husbands of Hollywood, which certainly doesn't compete with the Real Housewives of Alaska, but we'll give him credit nonetheless. That has to be a parody show. I don't know, man. I, I've never watched it. For that. <laughs> if Wayne Brady is on it, that's a legit show. Even if it's a parody show, I think I'm going to have to go find that. Real Husbands of Hollywood. So what do you think is bad in Wayne Brady? Or is he the goodness in the equation? I can't think of anything that's bad in Wayne Brady. Other than just his wicked sense of humor. Right? He was in the Tony Award winning Kinky Boots on Broadway. I mean, No way, really? Yeah. I oh, don't that's think cool. That, yeah, he was Simone. I, I really don't think that like you're allowed to be in that show and be bad so it must be thomas jefferson that's all the badness mm, just enough badness i think there's got to be you know again more badness than goodness hmm. at least jesse seems to be that way so maybe they didn't just maybe they didn't give that humperdue enough time to explode maybe maybe they didn't get the balance quite right yeah, I think maybe like Genesis kind of took hold and made him bow and then he was just about to explode and the doctor shot him in the head. So we're hoping, we're hoping that the actual Humperdew is not going to be able to retain Genesis. I, I, you know, it'd be one of those things where if I could be like sliders and jump in and out of parallel universes, I would love to see the results of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to happen in my real life, but it would kind of be amazing to see, you know, it would be kind of like, you know, if we had, if we'd lost World War II, what would happen? <laughs> right. What would life be like? Well, we have two episodes left to podcast, so we may yet get a flavor. <laughs> and maybe a season four. And maybe a season four. I don't know. You know, they were at this point in time, weren't they talking about that they were going to be doing shooting in New Orleans, but they had not yet announced. Um, this time no, last, last, last season, year? 
it was last year it was uh mid October before they made the announcement was that it? it was renewed. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just have to pay attention. Yep. Preacher Watch. Twenty eighteen. <laughs> yeah. No longer supplanted by Walking Dead Cohen Watch twenty eighteen. Right? Uh, I don't know what they're <sighs> gonna do. I don't know how they're gonna do it. I know this is not biters, but I just have to say they're killing me with the Rick Grimes' last episodes and knowing that Maggie is leaving too, it's just killing me. AMC should have commercials for like anti anxiety meds. Yes. They should yeah. be advertising treatments for anxiety while they are treating yeah. While, while they're advertising this season of, of Walking Dead. This episode brought to you by Valium. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, moving into the gospel, Job, and Revelation, what was your gospel? What was your good news? Hoover's a vampire! Hoover's a I, vampire. He I'm was a hilarious so vampire. He was an awful <laughs> grail, uh, 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 grail agent. Um, he was an even worse, uh, uh, like, blade wannabe. Oh, my God. I'm just getting that visual of him going. <laughs> <laughs> like, no sunlight ever. <laughs> and he managed to escape. Right. Which is pretty awesome. It is. Like, talk about nine lives. So Hoover is a vampire. Hoover escaped. And Hoover may, in fact, be the unraveling of Vicarious. Like, who can he turn to? Like, he can't go back to the Grail because the Grail is just going to stake him. I mean, he... He's going (sighs) to have to turn to Cassidy. Yeah, but, like, Cassidy's knocked out in a garage right now. Featherstone's on her way to hell. Where is this guy going to go? I don't know, but it's going to be funny, funny, funny to watch. You know, but if it's one thing that I know, Hoover always lands on his feet. (laughs) Hoover's like a vampire that became a cat that became a cat again that landed on his feet. I just don't know, like, it's one of those things where, like, sheer dumb luck that this guy is alive still after everything that he's been through. We've talked about him before where it's like, how did this guy graduate into the grail, you know? Everything that that, um, Hairstar had to go through, like, you imagine who, like, Featherstone, I could totally see her shooting everyone in her class in the head to become, you know, a grail agent, but Hoover... How did he make it? It's just sheer dumb luck. It's like everyone in his class that he he like was competing against like got food poisoning in the cafeteria that day. <laughs> oh my god! And the texting back and between back and forth between the vampires <laughs> and Hairstar. No, kill him. He's an idiot. <laughs> must be an autocorrect. <laughs> it's not <laughs> autocorrect. <laughs> Oh, that was great. It was great. Yes. And I, I liked ab- the way that they showed it on the screen. I thought that was really funny. Uh, right. Scrolling through the pictures mm-hmm. with the placards around his neck. That was that was amazing. Okay, but how P.O. do you have to be if you are a child of blood and, like, new guy gets to turn before you do and you've been dedicated to this cult for, like, two years? <laughs> Do you think they understood that it was exigent circumstances, though? Maybe. But it's like, really? I've been doing this for two... I've been showing up every week for two (laughs) years. In Grandma's basement. Grandma's basement. (laughs) Putting up with Kevin and... Yeah. The bad fake teeth. Yeah. And Hoover gets to go before me. Like, he... like. He should have to, like, clean up after our parties for at least a month before he gets turned. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely love that Hoover is now a vampire ex-Grail agent on the loose. <laughs> <laughs> that That's just, that's the best. Like I now, hope we get a healthy dose of Hoover in the next two episodes. This should be the offshoot movie. The offshoot show. <laughs> yeah. Adventures of Hoover the Vampire. I'm down with that. That would be fun. 
you know, The Walking Dead has its spinoff. I think Preacher could have a spinoff. Buffy had a spinoff, and he was a Buffy wannabe. There you go. There you go. (laughs) What was your gospel? My gospel was that Grandma is not just greedy. She is terrified of dying. Oh, my God. How old is that woman? Did you see all of those people? Right. And, like, they were, like, plantation-era people. How and old so is she? her hell is going to be dealing with all of the souls that she devoured. Mm-hmm. Oh. Which is interesting because it means those souls are not destroyed. It just means that she devoured them and I guess sent them to hell. I really hope that they're not in hell and they're in some sort of purgatory just waiting for her. Getting madder and madder by yeah. the decade. Yeah. Yeah, let's hope that's it. But I thought that was really good. You know, she just seems like a greedy, nasty old woman. And and what it really is, is that she's terrified to die. It kind of makes you wonder what made her make a deal with the devil in the first place. Like, was it just her own narcissism that she's kind of like, I want to be young and beautiful forever and I deserve it. And then over the years, it's like, oh, I need to keep continuing this because I have like six dozen people that are waiting to devour my soul in hell. Or was she just always, uh, was she, was she always horrible or was she always scared or maybe a little bit of both? And will we get any backstory or is this the most backstory we'll get? I think we'll get a little bit more backstory just because Satan seems to be such a good friend, but so eager to torture her soul. (laughs) Well, he is Satan after all. Yeah, that's very (laughs) Satan-like. So I will tell you that that leads right into my Job, which is that I kind of love, hate the campy Satan I love Campy Satan. I love him. I really have a love hate. I love the cartoon red and right. ears Johnny. Those big floppy and, ears. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I think we talked about it. He looks like the goat from the pentagram, you know? Baphomet. Yes. I just, I can't get it. He's like so fun evil he reminds me of the satan in the stand the stephen king movie novels the stand i need to watch that ah oh, it it is really it's good. just not triggering the memory for me so have you never seen it or do you just not remember it i read the book i don't think i've ever seen the the movie okay the movie is worth it just for the amount of like stars that are in it like, every time you turn the corner, you're like, oh, my God, that's that guy from that thing. Yeah. <laughs> I still want to watch Jesus Christ Superstar because of the EGOTs. That's very true. That's very true. Which will be just one more thing on my list that I don't get to. Well, and of course, you we, we, we've talked about it before. You know who Satan is, right? In this? Yeah, well, you know the actor. No. Jason Douglas, who is Tobin in The Walking Dead, or who was Tobin. No! In the Dead. Yes! No! I, okay, I swear to God, we talked about this. No, we have not done him as our featured cast. I had no idea. It's Tobin! Oh my God, so he has to be featured cast next week. <laughs> oh, I, I have, like, you wouldn't know unless you knew. That when is I, awesome. When he first showed up on the scene, when Satan first showed up, and I looked him up, I'm like, no way. That, that is, is not Tobin. Yeah, he's Tobin. That's so for best. those of you who don't know, who do, maybe the, the five people in the universe who don't watch The Walking Dead, it's Tobin from Alexandria who had a crush on Carol. Yeah. That's who Satan is. All right. He's our featured cast member the next time we podcast this. <laughs> Awesome. Because I had no idea. Awesome. Which, if you've listened to us on Biters before, you will hear Jason Douglas's profile over again. <laughs> That's okay. Because now, now he's Satan. Now he's Satan. So he's got some new things in his IMDb profile. So suck it up. <laughs> right. Which, he's actually got a ton of stuff coming up. So stay tuned for that one. Very good. 
Oh. Well, so what was your job? What was your bad news? Um, so my bad, I actually, like, I had a hard time finding a bad news. I until... rated it higher than you, and you had a hard time finding a bad. Well, okay, it was very meh to me, um, but not very meh. My bad is I absolutely love the uh, the Cassidy and Acarius show, and that looks like it's coming to an end. It does look like it's coming to an end, because... Cassidy really discovered that Icarius is not a nice vampire. And I'm heartbroken for the both of them because they have discovered so much in each other that I really, really wanted this to work out. And it's really, really not going to happen. But I think my theory was right. Icarius is getting his special powers from devouring other vampires. Exactly. So, exactly. Bum, bum, bum. And yeah, that's exactly what what Cassidy confronts him over is that's how you get your special powers. You know, Cassidy was wondering why he hadn't gotten any special powers from from turning people. And now he knows it's because you have to drain vampires. I mean, we think it's only because he turned three, but now we know. Right. And okay. So to play devil's advocate, but um, bump. Um, <laughs> is that really a bad thing? Like devouring other vampires? Yeah. Well, his vampires that he makes are so naive and sweet, though, and they're just excited to go forth and spread the gospel. Right, to proselytize to yeah. humans about how vampires aren't these awful creatures when Acarius really is. Yeah, so That's... it's kind of sad. It is sad, but you know, if I could shapeshift and fly, mm, watch your necks. <laughs> All right, good to know. I'm wearing a <laughs> turtleneck the next time I see you. <laughs> Only works if you're a vampire. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> well, <laughs> have you ever seen me after five minutes in the sun? Right. You I am a crispy critter. You're one of those people that sparkles in the sun. Uh, not quite. I sparkle all the time. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm extra. <laughs> No, I actually, I have this great, and I, I, you know, I don't think, and you may not be able to access it on my Facebook if you're not like a friend with me, but I actually have this great photo of me and I am so horrendously sunburned after walking my dog in the sun for like two hours for getting sunscreen. It's, it's horrendous. I, I've joked that I am a wider shade of pale, but it is totally true. When was this? Like two years ago, I, I decided to take my dog Phoenix for like an impromptu walk around the block, which turned into an impromptu walk to the glacier and back in the direct sunlight at like noon. Excellent choice. I know. I'm so fortunate I did not burst into flames. Well, you know, as Alaskans, we do give a new meaning to the term fish belly white. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm sure you were Dungeness Crab Red. Oh, it was, her yeah, it was horrendous. I'm, I'm actually surprised I didn't blister. Which I have before. I just got a little bit of sun in Hawaii and I'm peeling like a grape. Oh, that's what I do. I don't tan. I burn and peel. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm like a snake. I just shed this like giant, like, form of myself off. <laughs> I'm shedding pieces. I'm not shedding actually in a large form. So, but that perhaps means that there just was not enough skin exposed while I was there. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> now I think you need mm. to be a, you need to be a fan of Doctor Who and the last human Cassandra. There's a joke that Whovians will find funny when I say moisturize me, moisturize me. So totally not a Whovian. Totally oh. flew right over my head. That's coming up too, which is going to take up like five hours of the next year because that's how the British do it. They release like five episodes for like an entire season. 
That's <sighs> painful, dude. It is. It's horrible. Although I'm still kind of lamenting our short preacher season. I mean, I understand that it fits well within the confines of the Walking Dead universe and how AMC has to use their time for Walking Dead, but this seemed like a really short season. So it was. It. Um, I think the. Fr- I think I, we mentioned this before that the first season was ten episodes. The second season was thirteen, and this third this one's season ten. Ten again, and they and Screen Rant in their article did mention that they think that they will return to the ten episode season. So. Yeah, it's just kind of a filler between seasons, kind of. Ouch. Yeah. That's kind of brutal. <laughs> it is. It's you know, true, but it's kind of brutal. They have had a couple of juggernauts with Breaking Bad and Walking Dead and somewhat with Fear the Walking Dead and Better Call Saul. Their lesser known shows, Preacher, uh, Hell on Wheels and Into the Badlands just are kind of, they're a little bit like, eh, people check them out because they're on after the, the cool show. Hell you know? on Wheels was so good. <sighs> I really need to pick it up again. I think I left off in season two and I just, I love the main guy. I can't remember his name. Cullen Bohannon. Anson Cullen Mount. Bohan. And uh, the rapper Common. Yes. Oh, yes. Common that, was awesome in that series. That man just, oh, yeah. Anywho. <laughs> so... <laughs> Revelation? What was your revelation? Uh, I think we're going back to hell. Uh, I, th- I think so, too. And yeah. the angel of death thinks she's got the right grail agent. I know. I love... But actually, all she's got is a case of souls. <laughs> and But Tulip and Jody are going to have to go rescue Featherstone from Sydney. And I that's just, that's amazing. Oh, oh, hair, you screwed it up again. Yeah, poor Tulip. Poor Tulip. But I, I'm so excited that we're, we're headed back to hell. And, okay, so Hitler turning to Featherstone and being like, excuse me, do you happen to have a cell phone? And him texting Rick from the sandwich, or I'm sorry, from not the sandwich shop. Rick was from the circuit city knockoff right uh, right circuit works or whatever and rick being like oh crap they got hilter what is rick gonna do wouldn't it be funny if he came and saved the day oh my goodness okay so did you see that he has a swastika tattoo on the inside of his wrist no oh i was like oh how horrendous like as the actor to have to walk around with that on like on, at the show all day. Oh, yeah. No, but like I'm, I'm so excited that the shenanigans that are gonna happen between now and hell. We've got two episodes, and I do think that this season is gonna go out with a bang. <sighs> Let's hope so. Yeah. So, did you have a revelation? I did, and I I feel kind of dumb admitting it, but I'm going to just be honest and play dumb. So I kept watching the, the Humperdew clones getting killed, and I like I said, I was <laughs> like, oh my god, they're going to totally run out of Humperdews. I didn't realize they were saving the actual Humperdew for their successful experiment. So when Humperdew exploded, I was like, oh no, like... That's the end of Humperdue. Right. I was like, so much for Humperdue 2020. And apparently the secret to the church is science. Which is kind of funny. It is. It totally is. Yeah. So that was my revelation was just realizing, oh, they're holding the actual Humperdue in reserve. So we do have plenty of Humperdues. So I have all kinds of weird, um, like on the sixth, like the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the sixth day where like all the clones, do they like, did they clone a whole bunch of Humperdoos like 30 years ago? Or do they have some sort of accelerated growth process that they can just like make a Humperdoo on demand? I'm super like, 
the nerd in me is like super curious about this now. I'm going to vote for Humperdew on demand because they just didn't know how many Humperdews they were going to need to get it right. And I also want to know all the other combinations. Like, I, <laughs> I really think... Because okay, you so know that Louis the Sixteenth and Serena Williams were was not the sum and total of everything that they tried before they got the no. Tom Brady. I mean, they went through like five dozen Humperdews before yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, we saw Humperdew after Humperdew explode, which was a great montage, by the way. I I could not imagine having to explode a humperdew and then clean that room and explode a humperdew and clean the room that must have taken hours just to like i'm sure it was cgi but oh it's so, just so have you thought of any favorite combinations i actually haven't but okay so there is a video on twitter right now of seth rogan and he's got this amazing bong that would make snoop dog blush <laughs> And I really just want Seth Rogen and um, what's the other director's name? Sam Catlin. Sam Catlin, um, or creator's name. I, I want them to get together, get high, and just come up with combinations of people and just some, post some sort of list of combinations that they tried previously. I think that would be super duper funny. I think it should be like... Uh, oh, the the chick in the movie that I couldn't think of, Anna Kendrick. It should be like Anna Kendrick and like uh, Jeff Sessions or something. You know, like <laughs> I I just think that would be an amazing list. Let's see. I've got to think of somebody really good and someone not so good. So I'm thinking like Brent Kavanaugh and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> if, if we're going political. Super relevant at the moment. Yes. So, it, like, for our two listeners that are super fans, go to the Facebook page and post your list. Like, just post three combos that you think would be hilarious. Like, that would be awesome. Phil, it's on you. You have to help us out, man. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, like... Uh, Buzz Aldrin and I don't know uh, uh, Nick, Nicholas Cage there you go yeah <laughs> Buzz Aldrin and Nicholas Cage I think that's a winning combo right there <laughs> awesome I like it <sighs> Now I'm going to dream about weird combinations of people. Right. Sphinx people. So have you got anything for the word? I know it sounds like you've got a few numbers. I do, but none of them actually worked out. I, uh, I had a few numbers that I don't know that they worked out, but they were kind of interesting. Okay. But just kind of going through a few things that I had for the word, I got to tell you, I'm just so tired of this juvenile obsession with keistering things. <laughs> Where is Jesse's soul up the all father's ass? Oh, that is a pretty safe place though. How, how would you even find it? It's a little horrifying to think about. Yeah. And you know, he can't, how do I put this? Mm, he throws up a lot so I'm not sure everything goes all the way through all the time so I, like I said I'm pretty sure it's a safe place again how would you even find it in that mass of flesh Ugh. <sighs> not a good thought you can get shot in the chest and it's a flesh wound <laughs> right and uh, quoting Monty Python merely a Tis flesh wound Tis but a flesh wound <laughs> but a scratch so i also really got sucked in by grandma's dream mm -hmm. when it was like a you know featherstone dead on the couch and they're back and there's more souls than you could count and then she opens the door and it's sabina and all those souls yep yeah oh so the numbers that i had uh, the license plate on the Happy Go-Go van when they got to Osaka 
was QAZW789. Nothing came out of 789. Uh, the little zapper thing that Terra Star was using on Jesse uh-huh. was called the Make 'em Talk 3000. Oh, how funny. Nothing really from 3000. Um, on the video, when Tulip and Featherstone broke into the vault, uh, it was 1601. And 50- some change. Yeah, and some change. And then it went to 1602. And when they ended, it was 1622. So they were in there for 21, 20, 21, no. 19, 20 minutes. Nothing came of those. So I I looked up 1601 and numbers chapter 16, verse one. And the, the following verses, it's kind of a long thing about God killing people who spoke against Moses and Aaron. Hmm. I don't know that that really is intentional. It doesn't really seem to apply, but no. And then when, uh, Jody texted Tulip, her phone said that it was 229 and the text actually said it was two, the, that it came in at 227. It didn't look like it took her two minutes to check the text, but neither of those numbers came up either. Um, their seat numbers were 31, 32, and 33. Nothing came up really that was relevant for those that I thought. So not really any good numbers this episode. So they did say that there were 29 sexual harassment complaints in the lobby alone when they oh, were doing their human resources that. thing. Okay, and Featherstone did that thing that I hate where women clap when they talk. Right. I hate that. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. But Reality stars do that. I hate it. Their cover was super funny. It was. I did like them as the human resources team. It was very <laughs> funny. And did you notice that... So the way that they dressed Featherstone and the way that they dressed Tulip, they made Tulip all flowy and sexy. And they made Featherstone like she had high waters and she was kind of dumpy and things didn't fit quite right. I was like, oh. So the best demonstration of that was when they were in the vault and they were fighting over which one of them was going to break into the vault first. And like Featherstone's jacket is all fitted and short and uh, Tulip's jacket like is kind of pleated and gives her a waist. I totally noticed that too. Yes. And now it's, I don't know if that's a chick thing that we noticed that, but I was like, huh, that's interesting. Poor that's- Featherstone. I felt kind of bad for her because she's really not unattractive, even with the issues with her nose right now. Right. She needed to be dressed better. And it was funny. I was actually, I was reading something on um, somebody having a bunch of plastic surgery done to their face. And they said even a year later, the swelling seemed to still be going down like a year later. So it's like, oh, like no wonder why. And I've said that before in the, in the previous shows where I love that it wasn't like she had a broken nose one episode and then the next episode there was no swelling and there was maybe like a little bit of cut on her. Like they kept it for like this entire season. That like she had this like horribly deformed nose. Oh, and Tulip is enjoying torturing her over it. <laughs> <laughs> they enjoy torturing each other and I enjoy watching it. So. They do enjoy torturing each other. So there was something... Um, Numbers 29, so I did look it up after the the 29 sexual harassment complaints, and it's a listing of offerings that are pleasing to God. Ooh. So, again, you know, I don't really know that it's that valid, but that's what we got. 29 things that are pleasing. I think I I probably have, like, seven. (laughs) (laughs) 29 is a really long list. Well, and I didn't actually go through and count everything, but that's what it <laughs> seemed like. Okay. It seemed like there were at least 29, but it was numbers 29. So I'm, I'm just saying God's really easy to please and <laughs> super hard. Or really hard to please. Well, it just seems like a lot of things are very pleasing. Maybe he's got low <laughs> standards now or something. His standards have gotten lower the farther he's gotten away from heaven. Or, yeah. maybe, they've, or maybe they've gotten higher. Mm, that could be it. There are a lot of things in this world that could be pleasing. I just have never experienced them. So <laughs> maybe I need to get out as much as God. In a dog suit with a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> so the other thing was the number three, because Cassidy specifically mentioned that he turned three. And three, of course, is the Trinity. Mm. That's right. So those are my Bible numbers. My Bible I, numbers. I love that we can found completely different numbers. 
I always look for the the heart the numbers that appear on the screen, and you listen for the numbers that are said. I was just trying to find anything remotely resembling a number. Yeah, no luck this episode. <laughs> mm. What else? Um, I don't really have a lot else. I was disappointed in Star that he betrayed Jesse, but not surprised. How do you think he betrayed Jesse? Just by not coming through and actually killing the All Father. I just, you know, they've talked about how terrifying this man is. And I really think that he is just super terrified of this guy. He, like, I I don't think Jesse grasps how serious this situation is. Because the All-Father, of course, seems like he's he's something out of a comic book, you know. But, it, like, Hair Star, he's, he's a pretty terrifying guy in himself. And, he, you know, when something scares him, it, yeah, it's... I just think he's 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 taking this way more seriously than anybody else because he knows just how awful the All Father is. I think that he would be more scared of All Father than he would be of Satan. I think you're probably right. I don't think yeah. he would be very scared of Satan. He would be like, "Look, you hairy buffoon, get out of my way." <laughs> yeah, and I I think he would actually be super attracted to Sydney, the Angel of Death. Yes, I think yeah, so too. I, I would love to see that pairing. <laughs> That's way more bad than any of us can handle, but that would be amazing. I agree. Yeah. So my favorite line of the episode was when Satan was going in to greet Madame Logel and she he turned to TC and he's <laughs> like... Uh, we're good here kid go hump a duck or whatever you're into these days yes that was so funny <laughs> <laughs> and tc just kind of looked like uh uh okay <laughs> <laughs> right i absolutely loved that yeah i yeah like i said i, I really liked this episode you rated it higher than i did and i couldn't find much bad but yeah I think I always say, meh, and then I rate it higher. <laughs> See, and I think I lowered my rating. I think I had it at a 3.85 before, and I lowered it at 3.75 just because I'm like, I'm overrating it. Just because I haven't rated an episode really that high. And, of course, we have two episodes until the season finale. So well, it's so you just, better get on it. It's just going to go up from here. Okay. Yeah, no place to go but up. Or, or down. Down. <laughs> <laughs> down, as the case may be. Right. Well, anything else? No, I think that's all that I had. That's about all that I've got. Yeah. Until the next episode, episode nine. So we've got nine and ten. Yes. And then uh, if we wait. It'll be like June when season four comes out again. Yeah. Yeah. If we get it, which we probably will get a season four at this point. But yeah, our next episode, Schwarzenkopf. Is which it, was, I think it's Schwanzkopf. Schwanzkopf? Yeah, okay. I think so. It's the doctor, isn't it? Is that her name? Yeah. I yeah, believe you. It's the doctor that was making the, the combinations. I believe you, oh, grade one. <laughs> uh, so, until next week. Till the end of the world. Till the end of the world. Good night, everybody. Good night. Have a good week. You too. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. I left his body.